There's so many different ways to paint rust weathering on your minis. Today, I'm looking at two different styles in a step-by-step -step guide for beginners. Let's dive straight in. Each of the techniques will have the same starting points. I've assembled my pieces and primed them with black spray. I've selected some differing pieces like terrain and vehicle parts that we would commonly want to weather. I'm sticking a sand mix with PVA glue to areas that I want to look particularly weathered. This could be areas that are low to the ground, in areas where water would pool a lot, or even on some edges where you might have a gap in model pieces like I do on this Orc roller. Once dried, I add a second layer of PVA that has been thinned down with water to a 1 to 1 ratio. I generally do this step before going to bed and by morning it is dried. But alternatively, you could use a hairdryer and speed up the process. Pick out your starting metallic. Some easy options here include Lead Belcher Spray from Games Workshop, Vallejo Gunmetal Grey, which I'm using, or you can use Lead Belcher from a pot or any other gunmetal looking silver that you have on hand. I still recommend using a wet palette and a wet brush to avoid the paint going on too thick and covering up all the great details that we will want later on. Now the two styles in today's video are going to take different paths, but let's have a look at the first. We begin the first style with a wash of Agrax Earthshade, or a similar brown wash like the Army Painter Tones. Apply this with a larger brush, as you won't need to be all that neat and tidy here. I do suggest that you pay attention to where the wash is pooling though, and draw up the excess with your brush to remove it. A brown wash makes the metal look more aged and dirty. These pieces of metal have been left outside in a harsh environment and they haven't been cared for. But of course, this video couldn't be possible without today's sponsor. Typhus Corrosion is next, and this is a technical paint which is dark and dirty in colour, but also has some fine grit mixed in. It's a great way to transition between those sand patches and the smoother metal surface. You can choose to cover weapons, engines or tracks, and they will look abandoned and weathered, or you can use it more sparingly. Remember though that this destroys brushes, so ensure you're using cheap or old ones. Dirty Down Rust is a fantastic weathering product available that provides fast and great looking results. Start painting this on and focus on areas of your model where the water would pool or just areas that you think would look good. In recess areas around rivets and in those sand patches will look great. I suggest though that you experiment first because it can be difficult to control the results. You can see how it turned out in this video, but here's also the finished result of my Orc Big Mech to give you an idea on how it can vary. In order to bring some more of the rust to life against the dark weathering, thin down a bright orange colour in a 1 to 1 ratio of paint and thinner. I'm using Troll Slayer Orange. Paint this in as though you're performing a wash on targeted sections of your model. It will look intense to start with, but don't worry, because the paint is thinned, it will dull down and settle a little. Dry brushing is next, and select a brighter silver colour to our base coat from earlier. I've selected Rune Fang Steel. Your brush should be damp but not wet, so we can avoid that chalky look that we often get as a finish. Apply your paint to the end of the brush, and then back and forth wipe most of it away on a piece of paper or some paper towel. Then once most of the paint is removed, brush it back and forth with a loose grip across the surface of the model. This will catch only the raised areas and quickly add a light catching edge. I'm also focusing on areas that I think will have been bumped and have scratched away the older metal and rust. This could be on the corner of terrain or the edge of a weapon for example. The final step now is an edge highlight on the prominent surfaces with Rune Fang Silver. Raised long sharp edges are what you're targeting. Take your time with a thin brush and I find that holding it on an angle so that the side of the brush is dragging along can make it much easier to paint. The 
The idea of having different styles within the one video is to give you the confidence to be able to add, alter or remove any of the steps that you see until you find something that suits your mini's theme. With that being said, let's have a look at the second style now. Onto our second style now and some of the steps and techniques will be the same. Instead of a brown wash with Agrax, this time I'm using Nuln Oil as a black wash. Our metal will still look grim dark, but not as abandoned and dirty. Typhus corrosion again, and no change here. Paint it with heavy coverage if you want a heavily weathered effect, or use it more sparingly if you just want some contrast in your weathering areas. So instead of grimy chemicals, this time I'll introduce you to weathering powders and pigment powders. AK Interactive, Vallejo and MIG have some amazing products and I use each of them. Have a browse and pick your favourite. Today I'm using MIG Standard Rust and also their Light Rust. This can get dirty so make sure you have something down on your workspace to catch the stray powder. Using an older stiff brush that is dry, dip it into the powder and then begin pushing it against the model in areas you want your rust. I'm quite forceful and I work it into these areas by rotating and twisting the brush. I didn't cover the entire area that I want a rust effect with my first color, because now I'm coming in with a second rust color and applying it. Some areas I will overlap them a little and other zones I will just dedicate to the second color. Your model will come to life now as you have these varying red and orange powders applied. If we left it like this, then the powder would fall off and every time we touch the model, we would be left literally red-handed. Pigment Fixer is the chemical solution to lock everything in place. Using a cheap brush, I dip it in and then when you just touch the powder area, you will see the solution shoot across the model covering the powder. Work your way around doing this. It will look like you've ruined the look you've achieved, but don't stress. Once it dries, it will return to that powder rust look. Finally, I'm dry brushing with Rune Fang Silver again and adding an edge highlight on any raised sharp edges. If you've made it this far through to the end of the video, then thank you so much for the support that you're giving the channel. If you're after another video, here's one where I'm using similar rust weathering techniques as the Orcs Loot a Primaris Impulsor. Or if you're after another beginner's guide, here's one where I'm looking at Tyranid Hive Fleet color schemes with color blending and feathering techniques. Thank you so much again, and I can't wait to see you on the next one.